My name is Linda Neller, and this presentation is for EDU 850 School Law, uh, Module 14, the Case Study, um, Internet Use Violations. Uh, problem Identification and Analysis. Some facts about Ms. Tate. Uh, she does not have much teaching experience. She does have more education than many beginning teachers. She has no children of her own. She jumped to a conclusion with no proof in this situation, and she is feeling threatened. What do I know about Dr. Smith? Uh, the facts, he is focused on maintaining the highly regarded reputation of himself in the school. He hires highly qualified teachers. He's highly respected by the parents. Um, he's discussed some teaching techniques with Ms. Tate. And he stated he sincerely believes that the situation that has occurred is a prank. What do I know about the community? The families have secure financial means and the students' needs are met. The parents are highly educated. This is an urban school district in an affluent neighborhood. Students have their own personal technology. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and other facts um, in this case. Um, someone has posted slander slanderous information toward Ms. Tate via the internet. Dr. Smith and Ms. Tate both assume the threat came from a student, and Ms. Tate has accused a student of an act that could damage his reputation. What do we need to know about Ms. Tate? How much effort has Ms. Tate put into establishing positive relationships with her students? Does she have an experienced mentor other than her principal? How much time has Dr. Smith um, actually spent observing and working with Ms. Tate? Now, Dr. Smith as a professional, um, I don't know whether he puts more effort into maintaining his reputation and his schools or into helping his staff be successful. <clears throat> After discussing the techniques with Ms. Tate, which we know he did, does he follow up with her? And what kind of relationship does Dr. Smith have with his students and staff? And does um, the staff respect him? Um, we had an incident <clears throat> and um, some things that um, we would need to know about that was um, does the technology department determine, um, what do they determine when they analyze the situation and was district technology used and did they find out who issued the threat? Um, are there any legal issues here? Um, Ms. Tate could be charged with slander against a student. Um, hopefully um, no one knows that she even said anything negative about that student. Um, I think she was just frustrated. Uh, someone might be guilty of libel against Ms. Tate using the internet. They did state some things about her personally that um, probably weren't true. They probably had no basis in fact. The internet was utilized to threaten someone, um, which is considered a crime in some states. Um, so both parties could face legal action. So hopefully it doesn't get to that point. But I don't think that's the real problem here. I think the incident occurred because of a bigger problem, and that is the problem of relationships um, between Miss Tate and her students, between Miss Tate and her mentor, and Miss Tate and her administrator, which her mentor and administrator may be the same person. So um, Miss Tate and her students do not have a safe, comfortable, respectful relationship. Ms. Tate doesn't currently have the support that she needs to make her classes effective, and the students don't feel safe and comfortable in her classes. As a result of those things, now Ms. Tate does not feel safe and comfortable in, in her own classroom. So, plan of action. First of all, um, the first point of contact when Ms. Tate and Mr. or Dr. Smith were talking on Sunday afternoon, um, Dr. Smith should remind Ms. Tate not to mention any student by name when she speaks to her parents. If she's going to go back to their house and stay, she's probably going to have to give them a reason, but there's no reason for her to um, implicate any students by name. 
Um, then Dr. Smith should also advise Ms. Tate to not discuss this threat with any individual students when she gets to school. Um, she shouldn't start asking questions and accusing anyone. And third, he needs to immediately notify the district technology department to try and determine the source of the threat and establish whether district technology uh, was used. He can get the ball rolling on that right now. On Monday morning, <clears throat> Dr. Smith, um, I feel should address the student body, maybe just an announcement first thing. Um, he just needs to state there was an incident. He needs to remind them of the district's internet use policy um, and encourage students to come to him or a trusted staff member with any information they have regarding any situation they may be aware of. Um, anyone involved will know what he's talking about and he um, doesn't need to elaborate. Um, during that time, he needs to keep it short and to the point. Um, he needs to not mention any student names. He needs to guarantee student and staff anonymity. And um, he should not share any details or suspicions at this point. Um, after he makes that announcement, he's going to have to start gathering evidence. Um, he needs to keep everything confidential that he finds out. When he speaks with students and staff, um, he needs to use it as a learning opportunity for everybody, even himself. He's going to be learning some things he probably didn't know. And then based on the facts, um, he'll determine whether police need to be involved. Does he think it's really a threat or was it a prank? Um, and after he gets that investigation finished, he needs to have a meeting. So um, he, sh he would have already met with the students. Um, he should get together the student, himself, Miss Tate, and then if a student is under 18, um, his parents, his or her parents may want to be uh, present at that meeting. The student should be allowed to share their frustration regarding the class without any threat of repercussion. The student should apologize to Miss Tate for making her feel threatened. And then Miss Tate also needs a chance to speak if she wants to. Uh, she needs to keep it factual and respectful and start build, building a respectful relationship with the student. Um, all before um, this can feel resolved, everybody needs to feel like um, it's resolved respectfully and to each party's satisfaction. Um, everything that takes place should be confidential. And then Dr. Smith and Ms. Tate need to get together and Dr. Smith needs to outline a plan of action uh, for her to begin creating a safe, non-threatening environment for everyone. I think this should have been done long ago. Um, so now he's in damage control mode. Appropriate strategies. Um, on the technology issue, he would have a plan in place to monitor the operational systems. He would have a policy to handle threats and he would have already informed um, everyone that nothing's private when utilizing district technology. Um, in terms of the overall problem, an effective leader would be able to understand, identify, and anticipate these issues. Um, he would have adapted strategies to address the issues. He would have um, a school culture um, that promotes trust, equity, fairness, and respect. And he would have everyone working collaborative uh, within the school and the community to improve teaching and learning. I don't feel like these steps were taken uh, before the situation. So in order to resolve the behavior issue, which was the technology, um, if personal technology was used, they uh, may not have any proof of guilt unless a student or a group of student confesses. If no one confesses, they'd have to have a warrant to gather proof on their personal computers. According to the Fourth Amendment, um, the U.S. Constitution prohibits unreasonable searches of your computer. If the law becomes involved, the district might have less say in the student's consequences. Now, in order to promote the academic success and personal well-being of every student, um, with the overall real problem of the relationship issue, Ms. Tate needs more support in making changes to her class and Dr. Smith should make sure that that's available to her. Um, the plan for resolution should be between Mr. S or Dr. Smith, Ms. Tate, and any mentor or coach that he appoints to her. Debriefing my thoughts and feelings on Ms. Tate. 
Um, I feel that she made her accusation out of fear and frustration. Um, I think that she'd feel more valued as a staff member if she had more support in her daily teaching than she's, than she's received. And I think Ms. Tate needs an experienced mentor other than her principal. Um, also, um, she's got a very advanced level of education for a beginning teacher, uh, well, for quite a few teachers. And um, her knowledge of law, she, she would know um, that malice and defamation um, is not something that she should participate in. She um, should also have knowledge of how to gain a student's respect, but I know that that um, takes experience that she doesn't have yet. And then um, I still wonder if Dr. Smith values his um, staff and students more than he values his reputation or the schools. The unresolved issue is the technology issue. Um, we don't know if district technology was used. We don't know if law needs to be involved. We don't know if it was a prank, which we're assuming it was. Um, and we don't know if the issue is resolved. Um, reflection. Um, integrity. Um, Honesty, accountability are key words. Ms. Tate needs to be honest and admit that she needs help. Uh, Ms. Tate needs to model integrity for her students by being honest and listening to their concerns. And Dr. Smith needs to be held accountable for helping his staff be successful and take some responsibility for what has happened. Fairness, uh, same opportunity to everyone. Um, everyone was given the same opportunity to share information or admit wrongdoing. The situation should be resolved to the satisfaction of all parties. And Ms. Tate, um, it would be fair to provide her with support um, that would be fair to both her and her students. Ethical, um, the situation should be handled quickly and respectfully. The staff needs to work collaboratively with trust and respect. And Dr. Smith needs to have strategies in place to address moral and legal issues like the one that was presented here. Thank you for listening.